Uh, hi everyone and welcome uh, to this series of electrical B7 power system engineering PO exam. This is a question from May 2022, so it's a very recent question and it is about transmission lines. I divided this question to two parts. The first part involves the numerical questions, which has three parts. The second part involves some theoretical. I will have it in a, in a, a separate video later, later on. So let's see this question. So the first part says here, what is the geometric mean radius of a multi-strand conductor composed of three strands located at the corner of an equilateral triangle two centimeter on each side and three strands are each four millimeter in the diameter, okay? So in this question, you want to find the, what we call the geometric mean radius. Before, what, what, why this is important? Because the inductance of an overhead line is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 7 ln of geometric mean distance by the geometric mean radius. This one, regard, this one is basically a distance or the a formula for the distance between the three phases. And the GMR is basically the distance within the phase itself. Now, this is called bundle conductor. So this is just one phase. So uh, this is to deal with the GMR, and it's a bundle conductor. So let's find what is the GMR, basically, for the single conductor, OK? This is equal to e to the minus 1 over 4 times the radius. Now, from where this formula comes and why it's not just the radius. I can mention that uh, generally, but there is derivation and this is not the venue for that. Basically, there is a difference between the electric field and the magnetic field. So when we calculate the AGMR to calculate the capacitance, it's only R. When we calculate the inductance, it's E to the minus one over times R because there is a distinct difference between the electric field and the magnetic field. The electric field cannot penetrate the conductor, so the field inside the conductor is zero, but the magnetic field can penetrate the conductor. So that is what led to this. But as I said, this is not the time uh, to derive this formula. So this is E to the minus one over four times the radius, which is times Two millimeter, and this will give me 1.558 millimeter. Then the geometric mean radius for a bundle conductor is basically the third root of the GMR times d square, where d square is the distance between the between the uh, the conductors in the bundle. So this is equal to the third root of 1.558 times 20 square, and this will give me a total GMR equal to 8.54 millimeter. Let's go for the second part. In the second part here, we have a transmission line. Distance is 200 kilometer, okay? And we are given R as an ohms per kilometer, L as per millihenary per kilometer, and C as microfarad per kilometer. G is, we call the conductance, uh, and here it's ignored, so we don't need to really worry, uh, worry about it. So, now why we are giving here the 200? This is basically to decide which model to use. We have three models for the transmission lines. We have the short, the medium, and the long. Since this is 200 kilometer, and it is here, so we'll use the medium transmission uh, line model. And for this, the ABCD parameters is equal to this. A equal to D equal to 1 plus YZ over 2. B equal to Z. C is equal to this formula, okay? So that is the model, basically. And we'll use this model to calculate the sending uh, voltage and current in the coming example. So we'll see how to incorpor incorporate this in a power system problem. Okay, so basically here, uh, we need to find Z. Z is R plus J omega L times the distance. Because these are given as a per unit, a per, uh, sorry, per unit length. So we need to multiply by the total length to calculate this in ohms. 
So this is equal to 0.1 plus j 2 pi times 60, which is omega, times L, which is 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by 200. And this will give me 20 plus J 37.9 ohms. Your Y is equal to J omega C. And C, this is basically represent the, uh, basically the shunt element. And I will, I will show you the model, how it look like after I finish this. This is equal to J times 2 pi 60 times C, which is 0 0.045 times 10 to the minus 6 times 200. And this will give me J 0 0.00339 Siemens. So the transmission line model that we are working with is something like this. This is one of the models. This is the pi model. There is the T model as well. This is Y over 2, Y over 2, and this is your Z. So these are the parameters. Now here is the sending end, VS and IS. And here we have IR and VR. Okay, so we use this model basically to find the ABCD parameters that they are here. So here now, this is now becomes a direct application. So your A equal to D, E equal to D, equal to 1 plus Y, Z over Two. So we have everything. We have y, we have z. We already calculated this. So if you find it, this is equal to 0.94 angle of 2.07. For short transmission line, A and D are equal to 1. So as the line getting longer and longer, it start to be reduced, uh, the A and the D parameters. Your C, your, uh, sorry, B is equal to z, is equal to Basically, we already have it, 20 plus J 37.9. Again, in the short line, it is exactly the same thing. Your C is equal to Y times 1 plus Y Z over 4. C is usually represent more the shunt element. Usually, it's a small value. So it's equal to 0.00328, angle of 91.0. Uh, six Siemens. The unit for that is basic Siemens. And for short line, C is equal to zero. So as the line getting longer and longer, C start to increase gradually. This is for this part. Now let's see the last part. In the last part, you are given the A, B, C, D parameter. So the one that we calculated here, these are given to you in that question. And now here is the relationship, which is which, which we call the two-port network, okay, theory, that this is the A, the B, the C, and the D, and this is your VS, IS, here is your VR, and here is your IR, okay? And these are basically the phase value. So we said if the transmission line de delivers 100 megawatt at a unity power factor at rated and uh, rated uh, receiving voltages, Determine the apparent power line to neutral voltage, line to uh, current voltage at the sending end. Okay, so uh, now we need to use this. So we need to basically find your VR, which is in this formula. VR is the phase voltage, which is the 345 divided by root 3 angle of 0, which is 199.2 angle of 0 kilovolt. So this is your VR. Your IR is the current, and this is decided by the load. So we'll have 100 times 10 to the power 6 divided by root 3, 345 times 10 to the power 3, an angle of 0 because it's unity power factor, and this is equal to 167.35 angle of 0. Now, once you know VR and IR, we know already A, B, C, D parameters. Then you can find VS and IS. You could have a question that is composed of the two, meaning that you are giving only R, L, and C. You find the A, B, C, D parameters, and then you come here and you incorporate this in, in this formula. So your VS is equal to A, VR, plus B, I, R. A and B are given. 
VR, IR are given. So this is straightforward. This is 190.75 angle of 1.61 kilovolt. And your IS, again, CVR plus BIR. We already have everything. We have the A, B, C, and D. Everything is there. So this is equal to 168.61 angle of 18.6. Before I end this video, I would just try to uh, in, uh, talk about the results. Okay. Now let's go back to the model here. This is the model that we are using here. This is the pi model. Okay. So this is y over 2, y over 2, and this is it. And there's a derivation how you can go up from here to this to this formula. Go from this. This is not again the place to do that. But here, point is the this is vs sorry is vr and ir now the model has the impedance and has the shunt elements what is this shunt element represent it represents the capacitance the stray capacitance from the overhead lines the high voltage to the ground so they are not physical capacitors that you go under the line you hit them no these are basically we call them stray capacitance now these stray capacitors will inject reactive power in the system and injecting reactive power will lead to the increase of the voltage at the receiving end now it depends how severe is the load if the load is too much too much inductive then definitely the voltage at the sending end will be higher and then the voltage at the receiving end that is the if the system is inductive and high load if the system is lightly loaded because of the cap these capacitors that are injecting reactive power, you might come up with a condition like this one, that your Vs becomes less than Vr. So the voltage at the receiving end is less than the voltage at the sending end, again, because of the injected reactive power because of the capacitance. And the current is not high enough to absorb all of this, all of this current. This is why you will find even that uh, uh, basically, your uh, uh, the 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 voltage. This is why the voltage and also the power factor. The power factor is leading at the sending end. At the receiving end, it's unity. So the voltage and the current are in phase. But because the capacitive part is more dominant, or the reactive power is more dominant in terms of the capacitive injected power, then this will lead that the, the power factor here, the current is leading the voltage. The, Current angle is more than more than the body. So I thought that is interesting to basically to understand why the results looks like this.